Okay, I think we'll just do a quick recap, whatever we have learned so far. I know it's an alternate week thing, so we tend to forget a little bit about what we have learned uh, a week ago. So let's do a quick recap, okay? Now, this, this whole week, you know, Wednesday is going to be a holiday. We have three classes per day. So today we have the class, Wednesday we don't, and Saturday we have a class. When, I, when we have, remember it's not Friday. From this week on, your updated schedule comes into play. So you have the class on Saturday now. From now on, EPS sessions will be on Monday, Wednesday and Saturday. Looks like they need the auditorium for a different purpose, so we have it on Saturday. Now this Saturday we know what we have, uh, right? So we'll do a complete recap of everything that we have learned so far. Uh, we'll do it on this Saturday based on the attendance and all. Okay, that is the plan. Now next, uh, after that we have holidays, Dasara vacation. Then the week that starts after Dasara vacation will start with F FSG. Okay, so that we, because we have not been getting a lot of classes, so the week after vacation is going to be FSD again. Okay, please occupy seats first. The plan for today, everyone, the agenda for today is to wrap up bootstrap, right? Wrap up bootstrap and start JavaScript. Now it all depends on the pace, pace at which we, can, we are able to go and whether we can cover everything or not. We'll see that, but it's good to have a plan, right? So we have a plan of wrapping up bootstrap. Like I told uh, earlier, like I said earlier, each of these technologies is an ocean by itself, right, in itself. So uh, we can't cover everything in the EPS sessions. These sessions are meant for, specifically for you all, to get acknowledged to the technology so that you can work on the project, right? And they are also a little bit, uh, they're also a little bit focused on the interview perspective or placements perspective. So our focus will be on that, right? Now, so that is the reason why we will not be going too in depth into concepts, but we'll cover the main concepts and I'll share the links with you all to all the concepts that you must know, all right? Now, uh, CSS we have heard, we know cascading style sheet. By now you all must have known uh, CSS by rote. How to add CSS, where to add CSS, what takes precedence, uh, what is the proximity, right? Where is a style tag, where can it go? Can the style tag be at the end of the page? It can be, it doesn't really, uh, it, uh, I mean, how do I say? It's always better to have it in the head, but you can have style at the bottom of the page also, right? So that style tag can be at the bottom of the page, can be at the top of the page, up to you. Because it's going to be applied after the whole tree is rendered, the style is going to be applied, right? So it can be, but uh, as a practice, we have to add it at the top of the page. Now, the script tag, please listen carefully, the script tag. Where do you think it can be added? Should be added at the top of the page or at the bottom of the page? Bottom of the page usually, right? Bootstrap is okay, but any other heavy script files that you have, we should add them at the bottom of the page. Why should we add at the bottom of the page? Ideally, I'm, uh, I'm giving you a light idea about how things happen. Don't panic when you see or don't get anxious when you see uh, another code and see that script is added at the bottom of the page. Remember everybody, the interaction with the page starts only if the user sees the page. Agree? Only when the user is able to see the page will he or she be able to interact with the page. Now when can the user see the page? When the DOM tree is all loaded, when the styles have been applied, then you can see the page. Agree? So that is the reason why you can have JavaScript at the bottom of the page also. The interactivity can start or usually starts after the page is loaded. So you don't want to want the browser to wait for this 28 KB or uh, 60 KB or 70 KB file to load before it has even started rendering the tree. So that's why script can go at the bottom of the page, right? At the bottom of the script, because after the DOM tree is completely rendered and painted with the CSS, then people will start interacting. So it's okay for the uh, JavaScript file to load a little towards the end, later, right? Now. You must have, you must be thinking, I've read so many YouTube, uh, I've gone through so many YouTube links, I've gone through so many uh, Medium articles. Nowhere did I see anything, anybody mention about uh, where the script should be added and all. These days, with the fiber optic cables, with the speeds that we have with the internet, right? It doesn't really matter how a 50 KB file, I mean, it doesn't take that long for a 50 KB or a 40 KB file to load, 
right it's not that much of an importance but yes if you have three to four javascript files then yeah we suggest you add them at the bottom of the page the script tag script src equal to right now we know external css also now can you can uh, can you tell me where as a C where do we usually put our css files in which folder which folder do we put our css files in you remember last time when you worked on the exercise where did you add your uh, bootstrap min.css which folder in day 8 i have an index.html or i have my abc.html whatever exercise.html for that exercise right for the exercise what folder did i create css folder right we created a css folder and we add everything into that css folder what about javascript same thing we created a js folder and added our bootstrap bundle.js now remember please bootstrap bundle.js it's not just bootstrap.js it is bootstrap bundle why because bootstrap bundled few other libraries along with it and then created the js file right 10 years ago if you were to write can i have your attention please so when i taught for your super 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 seniors we used to add jquery also it's a very very powerful javascript library right so we had to add jquery and then add bootstrap.js jquery.js and bootstrap min.js now bootstrap folks have bundled it that's why you'll see bootstrap is not just bootstrap min.js but bootstrap.bundle.min.js okay let's zoom out we are trying to understand where we add the script files while everybody settles down i thought i would do a quick uh, you know talk about general talk about css and js files where to add why we should add them so if somebody asks you in the interview or wherever you go if somebody asks you about where we should add and why we should do what we should do you should be able to answer those questions where we should add the script files why we should add the script files what is this uh, bundle.js what does this bundler have does it just have the bootstrap or does it have more libraries it has more libraries it has a J jquery along with it right so it, it's all bundled up into one now uh, let's do a quick recap remember i showed you how in olden days how sites looked like i should sh showed you or told you how things look like now i told you this i told this is a very important picture to remember kindly focus important picture css inline css internal css external who created it then what is the css rule set right what is the css rule set like that it's a declaration block and that is the complete rule right then inline style how to add what is the advantage also i talked about need for css you can take the style out and somebody else can work on the style while you focus on the html part the difference what it is i told you about how the syntax looks like how you can have multiple fonts and all we talked about selectors i heard somebody asked a question about where is a place where uh, we are showing the selectors right this is a, this is the page we have different types of selectors remember this is not the regular academia se academia session regular class so i don't have like four slides on i class selectors and id selectors and all so going real quick right element id and class descendant and child how to add colors different ways then the background property i talked about how you can have repeat an image for a background and have it repeat and all that told you about how it looks like then we looked at border different types of borders right example then i talked about margin right margin is outside the border how to mention then i talked about padding we all understand what padding is between the content of the uh, object or the component and the border is your padding then i talked about the box model if somebody asks you about the box model what should you talk this is what you should talk about when somebody asks about the box model box is nothing but the the content then the padding border and margin right grouping of styles linking then i told you about how you take the css out and link use a link tag i notice many people do not close the link tag please remember to close the link at the at the end it's called an empty tag because it does not have another end link it ends itself like an img tag image tag right 
then i to told you about one very important concept what is that a, a very important tool how do you how do i look at the style please if you want to modify the style where do i modify it do i have to modify it in the html page and come back no in the web dev tools right so this is that the developer tools at the bottom right of the page you do an inspect you can see, you see that then i told you you can try css out that's the link where you can try it out then i mentioned responsiveness responsiveness is basically what again anybody what is responsive website yes when do you call a website responsive ma yes when the same website automatically adjusts itself to display fine in different devices mobile tabs and the regular larger screens right so that is responsiveness right i showed you this picture and i showed you how automatically the elements are aligned right again just because a website is displaying in a web page doesn't mean it's responsive are you all with me you see this image on the right it is displaying but then can you read it no right that's why responsiveness doesn't just mean displaying anything is said to be responsive we have an exercise on it today okay we'll be checking whether your web page that you have added is responsive or not meaning is it showing that toggleable icon that hamburger icon or that icon that we talk about on the right side or not if it is not showing your test case will fail if it is showing your test case will fall, uh, will uh, pass right so that is the responsiveness so we cannot say a website to be responsive when the nav bar is not displaying the toggleable icon and you are not able to read anything popular frameworks then i said with so many people working on creating beautiful css which company came up with bootstrap everybody knows <coughs> excuse me. which company came up with bootstrap twitter very good which is twitter now what do we call it x very nice so twitter came up with bootstrap and they gave us the libraries right they gave us the libraries for free open source came into existence and everybody started sharing their work with others and said you can use it go ahead and use it feel free to use it now bootstrap is a combination of what please bootstrap and i say add it bootstrap to my web page what does it have css and javascript there are two files that we have to add to make sure whether we add a cdn link to that or whether we get those files locally like we do in our exercise have a css folder and js folder and inside that how we link to them is up to us but then as long as you are linking to those files then it is said that you have bootstrap you are using bootstrap one other famous one is tailwind right history and all now this is designed bootstrap was designed using the concept called mobile first okay i'll give you an example today to show what i mean when i say mobile first meaning unless you mention categorically that this is how it should display in a bigger screen by default it picks up the mobile screen we'll see that in a moment right the cdn links then we talked about contextual colors right how do you achieve contextual colors you just say class any bootstrap style can be achieved using class equal to and you keep adding all the bootstrap classes to it right contextual colors we look at the container class in a minute right then we looked at buttons how you can have different types of buttons in different colors i told you bootstrap helped in people creating websites fast then we talked about badges remember the inbox and new the sale all those things can be achieved using badges so basically everybody the folks at uh, twitter or x created all the important components that we need to create a nice website right and they gave it away saying you just use this code and you will get a nice i'll show you examples of that now we do not have the kind of time where we i, I type the whole thing but i'll show you those things okay they are done these are all the different badges then we looked at did we look at tables we did not we look at tables then main components and all we'll see okay now remember so i'm going to show you containers tables few more bootstrap components and we are going to put bootstrap aside and you can experiment at home or whenever you get a chance you can work on bootstrap now before we go there 
there is an interesting concept called flex box. Everyone? Displaying your content in a web page, whether you want from left to right, right to left, or some components here, some components there, that whole thing is very, very complicated, at least without bootstrap. So they came up with flex box concept. You'll see this in very old websites or websites that are not using bootstrap. You see that there? I don't know if I can point at it. Can I? You see flex start, it started arranging everything from the starting and then like pebbles. That is flex start. Now this is without bootstrap. Flex end, it starts like that from this side. Center, it will leave space at the top and bottom. Stretch, it will stretch the components to take the whole screen. Then space between, these are things that you just have to know what it means, okay? You don't have to implement it, but this is the original flex box. Then people thought, why should I do it only in horizontal? I want to be able to align my items wherever I want to. So I want something like a grid, like a graph sheet, where I'll say three columns here, four columns here, three rows, two rows and columns. So in terms of rows and columns, I'll share this PPT with you. You see this one here? One dimensional. The grid is two dimensional. You can mention however you want, three columns, four columns, like that. So I'll explain this. We'll understand this in cl clear and more clearly in a moment. Until then, try to get, uh, get to know what I'm uh, suggesting at, like just the grid part of it. So people say, understanding bootstrap is nothing but understanding bootstrap grid model, okay? So when I talk about grid, I'll ask you to focus and please put extra effort to understand what is this bootstrap grid, okay? Grid system. Let me first show you. I've created a day eight folder. I'm creating, I have already created Today is day eight. I like you all to also to create a day eight folder. Inside that, I've copied over CSS folder and JS folder. Because in the exercise, we are using CSS and JS as separate files like that, right? I thought it's a better idea to go with that. That way you don't have to add CDN links at the top of each page. But if you are used to adding CDN links, go up with it, please. It's just that they won't work when the internet is off. Right? CDN link is a link to a content delivery network. It will not work. Now let me go ahead and open this in VS Code. So I'm opening this in VS Code. Right? I'm going to create a new file. Call it bootstrap.html. Remember, we are going to wrap up bootstrap. So before we do that, I want to go with the important things in bootstrap. Right? Now everybody, Whenever we, uh, you know, I talked about how you want to have a smaller picture and then if you want to, you know, make it bigger picture, you draw a grid out of it and then make it big. But you have to have a size, A4 size, what size of paper and how you're working, right? Similarly, in Bootstrap, there, are, there is what is called as a container class and a container fluid, please. Please remember, a class called, am I using the whole row. Okay, let me just do a control plus plus. Again, we are trying to understand bootstrap a little and then we are going to wrap up. So I just have a div tag, which is a container tag, right? And here I'm going to end the div, right? Inside the div, I have a header tag. Now here I'm going to say, class equal to, guys, I'm not going to wait for you to catch up. I'm going to share all these files in WhatsApp. So if you can, go with me. If not also, you'll be fine. Because the more time I spend on giving you five minutes on these things, the more, the less we will have for JavaScript, okay? So div class equal to container, and let me give a background color. How do I add a background to anything? class equal to, you see this container, after that I'm going to give a space. Remember, we can add multiple classes with spaces. So I'll say class equals to, sorry, class equal to container space, bg hyphen, uh, let me say warning. I like that orange, right? Now I'm going to say go live because I have live server installed, right? 
how come it's not working what do you think is missing guys i added class container bg warning what is missing in this file anybody nothing is missing the moment browser sees class and this what is it going to look for css very good so where is the css i didn't add any so here i'm going to go and say link href equals to css you see always in vs code irrespective of which language you are working on never type the path pick the path so i do a control space i get css bootstrap min dot css because i added it there then i close it done now script again for script it is src not href again i have my script in js folder bootstrap bundle dot min and i know script tag has an end tag done now i'm going to go and refresh class equal to container let's not confuse let me go here and say class equals to um, bg hyphen hold on p r i m a r y uh, spelling did i get the spelling right why is it not working now any thoughts anybody bootstrap port dispose go live still nothing let's see if it has it has a css it has the js it has bootstrap link and all let's try to troubleshoot live reload enabled okay link tag bootstrap bundle dot min class container i'm not sure why though let me just do a quick check again let me see if i can get the cdn links and get it working link href this should take care of it one moment everyone there inspect the style is still from the style sheet it says class equals to bg secondary bg info no nothing at all bootstrap is there okay let me see by adding link href or by adding the cdn links right there like looks like it did not pick up the oh maybe um, do i have i have them bootstrap and this for some reason it's not picking them up we'll figure it out later for now let me just add the cdn links okay let me just comment this out maybe the file path oh look at that right here guys i forgot rel thank you good troubleshooting there i was focusing more on i'm getting the file or not good job guys okay so you see that now rel equals to that here src and here rel so i did not mention style sheet so i did not understand okay so i make mistakes to prove that i am human right to error is human <laughs> okay so here we have the style sheet guys so let me get rid of this link tag there we go done now let me show you one more container hyphen fluid make sure you don't have any spelling mistakes please there you see the difference this one has a gutter space at both sides please whereas container fluid doesn't so i don't have to mention the screen size i can just say container and container fluid and it'll pick up how much ever space you want so this is the first thing right now let me show the next one remember last time what did we do we added a nav bar so let me add a nav bar to this whole thing 
Now, in the last class I said, I'll explain the nav bar. You see that everybody? I got my nav bar here. I'm going to go and comment out this container. Again, like I said, I'm going to share all the code. You have nothing to worry. Everybody, I hope you're able to see the nav bar. Let me see if I can add. I think the tertiary thing is taking over. Let me not change the nav bar there. Keep it as is. All right, everybody, please look at the screen. I have used getbootstrap.com and I got the nav bar code. I'm going to explain to you the nav bar for about two minutes. And later on, I'm going to show you all the other components that we can use with Bootstrap, okay? So this is the nav bar, right? So look at the nav bar, please. Look at the number of classes that have been added to this nav bar. One is the regular nav bar, the nav bar expand hyphen LG, then this one. Now we'll go one after the other to understand. Let me collapse the whole thing. As you can see, this nav tag has a div. Inside the div are all the navigational elements. Now let's see how they have done it. There is a navbar brand that says navbar. So on the top left, this part, okay? Before I explain this, let me tell you, explain something. The folks at Bootstrap could only add styles. Can I get your attention, please? They cannot add new HTML tags. You agree? HTML tags are all set. So what they have done is pick the tags where you can list and change the appearance. If the tags are listed, if the, you, they took a UL tag and said, oh, it has to have multiple elements. Instead of vertical, I'll display them in horizontal with certain boundaries and edges and some colors to make it look like a nav bar. Understood? So that's what has happened here too. We are going to go real quick to understand what this is. You see this here, everybody? That is a UL. So they have taken the UL and added styles to that in such a way that an unordered list of elements is not displayed vertically but horizontally, right? So they have added so many classes to each of these. See that? Class equal to nav bar nav. Each item is given a special class called nav item. You know how NumPy has its own things that is going that are going on inside like that. Here too, this is a library that we are using. I'm just trying to explain how it looks like. But this li is not a simple li, but it has a drop down. You see that? So this one is a drop down one. So they have used the regular HTML elements and given them a facelift kind to make them look different based on the classes that have been added to that. Clear everyone? So that's why you'll see that there is a nav, there's a div. I'll come to this button in a moment. And there's another div inside it with so many different classes. Okay? Now, can one of you tell me what is this button and why am I not seeing it? Button is clickable, right? And it says what? Navbar hyphen toggler for the class. Where is that button? I don't see any button. Do you see that? No, right? Where is the button now? Now let me show you where the button is. I changed the appearance to iPhone SE and you look at that one. Toggle device. This is the button. So, the code is written in such a way that in smaller screens only this button appears. The styling is done in such a way that only in smaller screens you see that button. In bigger screens, you don't see that button. This is the beauty of boots, Bootstrap. It helps it automatically adjust things so that they look good in any screen, right? Now I'm going to explain only this component and going forward, no more components, please. We'll directly go to grid and then JavaScript, right? Now let's try to understand. So this is that button. You see that? The button is toggler button. It is collapsed by default, right? Everybody understand this? This is M, E, M, B. These are all margin at the edges, margin at the bottom. 
so these are all the things that have been added so that your nav bar looks pretty okay and there is the form you must be thinking where is the form in this one this one you see this a text field and a button this is the form so like this the people at uh you know uh, uh, people at x have done what have created beautiful classes for us to use and create components on the fly if i had to do it using css it would take quite some time okay now let's move on quick that is the nav bar for you everybody now remember i told you i'm going to explain what mobile first is kindly focus and look at the screen for one minute focus remember in bootstrap they have divided the screens into small extra small small extra small is your mobile screen please remember your vertical mobile screen is xs they have given them some note some code small is when you rotate your phone medium is tab screen large is your laptop extra large is your desktop extra extra large is the anything that is more than that like in a conference room you have those big screens right so they have given those names and wherever they want to use those names those shortcut codes they'll use them now let me see let me tell you what i mean by that going back to the code you see this one navbar expand large right now look at it carefully i need you all to look at the screen this is my navbar look what happens when i remove this so what happened it is displaying the mobile screen right so bootstrap was designed keeping in mind mobile first meaning if you do not add anything it will assume that you are opening this website in the mobile screen and it will have that see that but you have to explicitly mention that it is it needs to expand the nav bar in larger screens so that's why in my large screen which is desktop it is displaying or which is laptop it is displaying like this done now let's move on we have an exercise on this one of the exercise for today is for you to add nav bar to your page right run the live server share the link with us so we know that your screen appears fine in different devices right meaning this is displayed when the screen size is reduced do you think this is the only way to check it toggle device is the only way to check it guys no i'll just bring it out you see that in olden days this is how we used to check increase the size like that you see the moment i increase the size a little automatically it became a regular nav bar the moment i reduce the size this is another way of looking at it all right everybody now what i'm going to show real quick is there are the different components in bootstrap okay like i said i'll share this code in whatsapp you have nothing to worry it's a nav bar you have already done it okay now let me quickly show you different components and then we'll go to bootstrap form one of the important things in bootstrap or any web page is the login box click on it and you display a box a pop up dialog that's called a modal in bootstrap right the next thing is where you have, there's lot of content and you have tabbed panes one pane after the other you want display content in kmit website also you'll see in many places they are using tabbed panes where you click on it it will open up and collapse that is another one then there's a carousel where you see a slider it's called carousel please make a note and look it up in getbootstrap.com it's a very interesting and a good thing every website Uh, almost all the times has a carousel right then we have what scroll spy tab pen so i'm just going to double click on these and show these to you i'll share the files but just look at them this is called an accordion everybody you know accordion the back piper accordion so i click on it the content comes up what is the code for it i added the bootstrap links as you can see 
very simple accordion like we have nav item we have accordion item that is all then cards this you must have seen many times c a r d s you can make a mental note or a physical note and look them up later okay you must be thinking where is she getting all this from you just go here and type in getbootstrap.com accordion card tabbed pen you will get all of them the code is all there right so these are cards many a times you display information in terms of cards so this is that then we have a jumbotron anybody knows jumbotron in football field or any match you have those big screens even in cricket matches where they display stuff and people's images sometimes or who won the ticket or something like that that's called a jumbotron a big screen so let's see how that looks like really big screen you see custom jumbotron you can have this in your website how do you get it again very simple code you create a custom jumbotron like that i'll share the screen with you then one of the very very important things m o d a l model click on the button displays the model usually used for login right okay then we have off canvas many a times something is not seen on the canvas on the screen you click on it it displays close it this is called off canvas then scroll spy you see first and first i scroll and go to the second heading automatically second is highlighted i scroll go to the third heading third is highlighted fourth same with fifth this is called scroll spy the last one that i have is tabbed pen you look at the, co the code please let's say you have lot of text to display you would go for this one profile messages now guys don't get intimidated looking at all these things and wondering how will i get all these how to learn all this there's no need to learn you don't want to go into intricacies of your numpy and see what code is going on you know you should know how to use them right these are also similar things don't put too much effort in trying to understand the intricacies but know that if there is a data hyphen bs hyphen toggle it says data then it is javascript related you need to have the script at the top if it is just class it is bootstrap min understood so you need to know how to work around you don't have to remember the code of how to display by rote now one last thing here we go i'm going to show you give you access to a quick extension everybody kindly focus there is this extension i click on the extension it's called bootstrap quick snippets bootstrap 5 can you all install that are you all seeing it and bus elven rocky can you all install that in vs code please bootstrap 5 quick, quick snippets if you are not able to do it now go to your ps class and do it then i'll give you 2 minutes to install it bootstrap 5 quick snippets it's by mr anbu selvan rocky there are about 1 million downloads of this and the star you see five star rating done how many have installed can you please raise your hand only a few is anybody having trouble getting it remember please all vs code extensions are installed by clicking on this square here click on that square where the one square is going away type bootstrap five quick snippets and click install done let me give you 2 minutes once you have installed i'll show you how to use it then you will find bootstrap very easy
How many have installed? Can you all raise your hands, please, so we can move forward? I think that's a good number. People at the last? What about you guys? Bootstrap 5. Quick snippets by... One last time. How many have installed? In the whole auditorium? Done? There? All right. Let's move on. Why did I ask you to install it? Let me show you what I mean by that. Why should I have to install? Let me go here. Everybody, to the screen, please. You be no exclamation, right? We know uh, that we can add our link and script tags. This time around, I'll make sure I add the relationship also. Done? I think that's a little. Now look at me, please. Everybody to the screen. Look at the screen. Bootstrap, right? So I'll just type BS5. Hyphen. I want an accordion, a default accordion. Because I've installed the extension, it is giving me an app option. I'll say default. Now do a control S. I got the complete code. So it gives you the code snippet. Okay? So you don't have to worry too much about copying the code. You can get it from Get Bootstrap also. You see, I got the accordion. This is the single accordion, one. If I copy paste, I'll get more. Okay? Similarly, I can go here. And I'll say BS5 hyphen table. I want it to be responsive. I want it to have a primary color. It even asks me which color do you want. You see that? I got the table. A responsive table. Now if, if I do inspect. Whoa, hold on. I have a, there, you see that? What did I do? So if somebody asks you, did you write everything from scratch? Not necessary, please. You don't, you can say no. BS5 hyphen, I can actually get a badge. Badge button, yes. Uh, I want it to have a red color, danger. Control S, I go back, cut it, there. Everybody, in these days of building things fast, it's not very smart to start typing each and every piece of code. Not when there is no brain involved, right? If there's some brain involved, you are doing some data structure stuff, talking to a server, getting information from server. If this is my personal opinion. It makes sense to put some intelligence into it or to put some effort into it. But this is just a basic one, again, for really beautiful sites, you'll have to put brains. I'm not, don't, don't take offense of it, of what I said. What I mean to say is for basic stuff, you don't have to work too hard. Use some extensions and get it done. So like this, I can have as many components of Bootstrap as I want by just going there and saying BS5 hyphen, let me see if I can get, I can get a button, you see that? I can get a card grid. Okay, let's see what it does. You see that? It gave me two cards. I can go, now I can work on it. I can change the background color for this card or for this, you know, for this card, let's say I say BG hyphen warning. These things I need to know. Basic stuff I need to know to tweak it. Understood? So BS5 hyphen cards is what I said. Uh, then like that I have accordion we have done, right? I think we'll stop here. It also has a nav bar, but I let you, we don't want to put too much time into it. How many of you understood what happened? Can you please raise your hands and tell me how to use Bootstrap 5 quick snippets? Shall I repeat it again? How many want me to repeat once more? All right, let me repeat it one, once more. So what I was trying to say is there are two ways to add Bootstrap. We can go to getbootstrap.com, 
type up nav bar accordion and copy the text over like here right click on this you can copy that text and paste it in our page the only thing that we have to make sure is make sure you have the link and script the other way of doing it is can you all look at the screen all those who wanted me to show it again i am creating an again dot html right here i go with exclamation i have my basic html page now i know that i need i still need the libraries right so i'm going to add the libraries bootstrap libraries at the top i have an extension that i have installed the extension you know like extension to python would help you compile python files extension would something live preview you know live server is helping us open up in the browser similarly the extension that i told you bootstrap 5 quick snippets by ambu selvan ambu selvan rocky helps me in giving me code snippets okay so i'll say bs5 hyphen and when i once it is installed and i have it i can simply pick anything that is in bs5 is going to give me a code snippet i'll just pick accordion default and it will give me an accordion now when i go and launch it i'll see a simple accordion right now if i want more this is one accordion item right so i'll just collapse it copy that over add one more but remember everybody you click on something and it should open something right so make sure you change the id you will know it with experience don't worry too much about this so i'm going to change the id to to now if i go into this i'll end up explaining everything to you guys so i don't want to please research and find out okay so this is what it is now the next thing that we are going to go over is a form 10:30 already okay sir we are already at 10:30 done everybody bootstrap five quick snippets please seek friends help or go to your mentors and ask it's very easy install the extension and copy it over do a little bit of research right so that is that now let's go and understand one of the most important things in any web page right whenever you visit a website and try to buy something right or try to use a service what is the first thing that they ask you to do what are you first what is the first thing that you are asked whenever you try to get some information out of a website or to buy something an e-commerce site what are you asked to do what is login right so register and then login very good so not only is the appearance and these tabs and the accordions and the carousels and the nav bar not only are these important but one of the very important things in any website is a form how do you add a form right so what i'm going to do so i'm going to take help of getbootstrap.com and create a form everybody with me remember nothing to panic i'm going to share all these files with you you can practice it at home in this one hour if you try to practice everything you will get you know the knowledge will not be full take all the files home and practice home or in ps or whenever wherever you want you can practice okay so let me go what i'm going to teach now or what i'm what we are going to look at now is part of today's exercise so please focus i'll call it as my form dot html everyone we are trying to understand how to add a form to my page so i'm going to go back and do the same thing exclamation right i'll say login form in the title i'm just saying login form then most important thing don't forget to add the files the bootstrap files done now what does a form contain a login form contains an email most definitely a password field and a submit three things are there right so i'll most definitely have what again a form tag first remember when was the last time we worked on form in the contact us 
in the initial classes third or fourth class we worked on form it is a very exactly similar to that it, it is very similar to that except this is a nice looking prettier looking form it's a bootstrap form okay so i want a form with what do i want with an email field right and a password field maybe a check box for something may i abide by the rules or something like that or right and a submit button i'll comment it out done are you all with me how many are with me how many are understanding what is going on please raise your hand so that i know i can move forward remember this is part of your exercise we are just adding a form thank you we are just adding a form we are making sure that this form looks pretty and this is the login form okay so let me go here and because we have very less time i'm i just typed a form here in getbootstrap.com you see this is exactly what i need okay so let me just overview of the form right i'm just going to copy that over and we'll understand the form better let me get the code let us go during the form days itself when we first looked at the form i'm not going go, to go too deep into this because we have already learned how to add a form in contact us input type equal to email will get me email field input type equal to text will get me a text field input type equal to password will get me a password field input or uh, without input just text area you'll get a big text area for remarks right we have done that in the initial days so we are now looking at the first one where input type equal to email here is the interesting thing form control this is a bootstraps class so automatically it knows how to resize and how to align and make it look pretty the other interesting thing everybody is remember in our original form we typed up saying name email like that but label is what is used always okay you know how your book has a label telling what it is about your notebooks or something in your school you have a label that you stick to it right saying this is this subject and this similarly here for any form control the practice is to have a label and tell that label that you belong to this particular input field so what is this label for it is for this input field email you see that the name here is matching you must be wondering but ma'am we'll just mention email address and we'll leave it there what is the need for this label thing and all you can also write on a book right saying name is tirisha subject is social or something why stick a label here in our scenario everybody can you all focus for a moment in our scenario our website is for all types of people people who can who can read like regularly people who are physically challenged people who are blind who can't see right so you have screen readers all right so you have screen readers or software that goes over if somebody is finding it funny then you can come in the front you might find it more funnier but otherwise please focus so you have screen readers that are going to go and read the content screen readers if you put just plain text it will read as plain text or software that helps you the person physically challenged person to understand that this text field this is what it is supposed to contain a name so your labels with your rrh tags help people understand that so this label clearly mentions that it is for this particular thing and look at this please help text right so this is one next and i already told you mb is margin bottom mb so margin has edges bottom top so you can have different right so here we are giving another and then the next one is input type is password again it's a form control it has an id that id is be used for this label 
so the screen readers or whatever are there they understand that this is associated with this and it is for password similarly just for you all to understand there is a simple check box input type equal to check box right we have already gone over all these form element uh, we have already gone over this contact uh, form earlier this is just a bootstrap part of it look at this button please first you are mentioning class as button and then you are saying button btn hyphen primary you cannot have a different class name you have to use the same now let's go live so this is my email address password and check box now let me toggle the device again you can make it centered and do all that i let you do that you see that when i have it in my regular phone size it is not crushing it it is still full screen and it displays fine so i can type anything i want to right here to check me out click on submit it will not work you see that because i said type equals to email it expects this to be a email even if i do not give dot com and do a submit go ahead but then make sure that it has add the rate symbol and has proper information right dot com dot co dot in it could be anything how is it checking for that because i mentioned type as email everybody you have an exercise on this we are going to open it up but the initial the first exercise is going to be on the responsiveness okay let me show you what the first exercise is okay now before this uh let me share this code in whatsapp okay or do you all have getbootstrap.com you all know how to go getbootstrap.com right it's a website so make sure you have the form and the navbar content locally in your computer okay let me give you 5 minutes while we set up and get the exercise ready for you i want you all to get a navbar in one html page and to get a form in another html page please have these two things ready again we go to this page bootstrap type navbar for navbar and form for form f o r m i type here overview and i take the first form that appears copy that code so have these two ready in your computer in your html page because once you connect to the kmit audi you will not be able to access internet and we don't want to give the code continuously from our side you see what i'm saying we don't want to put the code on the network go to get bootstrap.com get the form code and navbar code and keep it handy okay in two html files just add it there make sure wherever you are working on make sure it says exercise whatever number make sure there is a css folder and a js folder inside that you have your bootstrap min.cs and bootstrap bundle.min.js okay now okay so meanwhile shirisha sets up the question uh, i want do you have any questions here do you have any questions okay uh, can anyone tell me what are the takeaways of today's session today you learned about bootstrap so what are the takeaways raise your hand so i can just come over to you I can tell your name what are the takeaways for today's session shivani how to use bootstrap snippets in vs code very good how to use it bs5 hyphen will get all okay if that is a part of extension okay so one take away is we know how to use the extensions okay but that is not the major part anyone else who can just answer vajra we need to link the bootstrap link that src files and the style sheet such that we can make the changes in the website required your colleague says uh, so we need to link up the bootstrap and js file using uh, the corresponding tags link and script tag and keep it in header but that is not the thing that i am looking for what are the takeaways key takeaways i'm talking about key k e y key takeaways for that you should know
which is very important for you to remember. The accordion, all these things are all already available online. You can go search for it, you will get the code, use it at, at your convenience. But what are the key, take key takeaways? Yes? Okay. So if you're still confused, please ask questions, but I'm just giving away the answers. First takeaway, you use, you learned something about bootstrap utility class. Have you seen that class? Utility class. Madam went to bootstrap.com, she Get typed Lennox. form, Get she Lennox. typed Lennox. accordion, Lennox. she typed table. You get the code, that is called as utility classes. So you should know where should you find those utility classes, number one. Number two, number two, what did you saw? If you use bootstrap framework, you maintain constant consistency on all browsers. Consistency is very crucial word. That is the key takeaway. You saw that. If I open my form in Google Chrome or Firefox or Safari, I'll get the same layout, same button color. That is called as consistency. That's why we are using that framework. Number three. You have exposed, you were exposed to see the grid system. You know, grid system? What is the columns of a grid system that you saw? How many columns are there? So we haven't covered grid yet. No? No. Just but covered. grid system is very important to remember. If you want a division, for example, a sidebar and the main content, so Overall grid system has 12 columns, three columns and nine columns, right and left. That's how you divide to have that work area. Grid systems are very important. You should know that. Second, utility classes. Third, third is what? Consistency feature. I want one more key takeaway that you learned in this class. Those are utility classes, accordion, the how do I work it. Third is customization. If there is an accordion or a slideshow, you need to change the time. For example, you see slides moving left to right. No, I want to move right to left. No, I want to change the number of seconds that slides to visible. That is called as customization. So these three things are important to understand. Yes, able to understand what I'm talking? Yes. So if you're not comfortable with these three key takeaways, I would like you to revisit listen to the video or the lot of other reference links which your mentors are going to share to you. These are the three key takeaways that you should know. Others, you will find it online. You'll get copy paste to it. But three takeaways are very important. Yes, Shirsha, are, are we ready? Yes. Yeah, so exercise are open. You can just attempt and I'll come back. Everybody, for the exercise, you are expected to add only nav bar, bootstrap nav bar, and check. That is all you are supposed to do. The test cases, the way we have written, will automatically adjust the screen size and check if your toggler icon is displaying or not. I repeat, today's exercise, the first one, is for you to make sure that you have the responsive, the bootstrap links, CSS and JS, like we did in last class. That is mandatory for all going forward, right? For all the test exercises. The second thing is, you must have a nav bar. Your nav bar will not work without the CSS and JS, please. So make sure you add CSS and JS links, the local ones, not the CDN ones. And make sure you add the bootstrap nav bar. Once that is done, get the IP address, 
you know, go live, check if it's displaying fine in a toggling device also, check there, see if it is displaying fine in all devices, see if you're seeing the toggler icon, then replace the 127.0 uh, IP with your local IP. Check if it is working fine, submit that URL, as simple as that, just the nav bar. You look at, if you click on the hint at the top right of your uh, experiment exercise, you'll see what I'm talking about, okay? When you click on the hint. Download few things, we are going to give you access to a local network. The bootstrap CSS if you don't have, the code snippet, the utility class code snippet, if you want, you're going to get it. So meanwhile, you write the code, the logic, and you can test it once you receive those files. If you have any questions, please seek mentor's help. We're going to start exercise two in a moment, please. Be ready with the form page. One, two, three, four. Why are you getting it? Why are you getting it? There are two reasons. Number one, you are not allowed port number 5500. If your if port number is 550, is it 550? Yes? So, some of you might not have allowed the firewall to accept port, that port number. By default, if you run in Python server, it runs because by default 800 port number is open and that will give a direct access outside your laptop. To make your code go outside your laptop. So you have restricted that permission. So currently, if you're facing that problem, use Python server to execute and run that HTML. If you are not, the next coming session, I'm going to tell you the remedy. It takes five to 10 minutes to talk about it. I don't want to waste that time at the end moment, okay? Use Python server in that regards. So second one, I hope how many of you done? Okay, very good. So we'll stop all the activities in next five minutes. The form we are going to start now, sir. But you have it ready, you just submit it, right? They're going to submit it? Yes, is it there? Yeah. Open? Yeah, it is there. Refresh it. Everybody make sure the form page has only form, no nav bar. No, no, second one, please refresh it. You will get that. Let me repeat, for the second exercise, which says bootstrap form, you must not have nav bar. Only form should be there in that. Submissions already. So for the second one, I see quite a few have already submitted. Four of them have already submitted. Rest of you, submit. Remember to have only form, please. The form that we discussed. Do not have nav bar. People are submitting. So okay. Submit quickly and we'll meet again on Saturday.